Good Friday to you folks on Good Friday. This is an article from BreakingIsraelNews.com, and it's significant because it changes the balance of power in Syria. And there's been a couple of stories about this over the last couple of days, a uh, week or so. I've not spoken of it yet, but apparently Israel has a new supersonic uh, missile that uh, apparently is getting around Russia's S-300 system. And this is another part of the reason why apparently Israel is able to do stuff in Syria and uh, and Russia isn't uh, doing anything about it or is unable to do something about it. Now, we spoke of the uh, aerial support uh, by the United States supporting Israel, whether through radar jamming, etc., or agreement with Russia to stand down on uh, taking action against uh, Israeli jets flying over Lebanon, Syria. Uh, but now we have this particular report, uh, speaking of supersonic missiles, and uh, we've heard about the supersonic missiles from Russia and China working on supersonic missiles. These are uh, missiles that uh, uh, can evade the current missile defense strategies of, for example, the United States. There's been lots of talk about that. Um, there's no defending, apparently, at this time against supersonic missiles or nothing that is sure to work. Um, and that's something, uh, you know, for another video to look into. But uh, apparently the IAF used new supersonic missiles to beat the Russian S-300 anti-aircraft system in its attack uh, on Syria, so the latest attack. It says it was reported Monday that Israeli Air Force used a new supersonic rampage standoff air-to-surface missile in an airstrike that hit Iranian military targets uh, inside Syria. So here are a couple of tweets here. Israeli Air Force successfully used Rampage for the first time. Apparently, you know, this supersonic technology is kind of the, the latest hot technology that all the countries are coming out with. And Israel is uh, maybe the first to actually use it in actual combat, in live combat. Uh, countries like Russia, China uh, have maybe been testing supersonic missiles or touting their ability to uh, evade uh, or get through uh, for example, U.S. air defenses, um, but apparently Israel is now using them in action. Israeli Defense Forces carried out an airstrike against a missile factory and warehouse of the IRGC, the Iranian uh, Guard Corps, um, Syrian Hezbollah and in Masyaf. So I did a, a video about uh, Masyaf, one of the uh, cities of the two in Syria that were struck. Um, Iranians were killed. I think there was a Libyan killed, um, a, a North Korean killed, uh, missile experts. Syria um, destroying multiple artillery rockets and ballistic missile launchers. Um, it hit in Masyaf, Syria, and it uh, destroyed a bunch of stuff. According to Syria's Santa News Agency, Israeli jets fired the missiles from Lebanese airspace about 2.30 a.m. Saturday morning. The airstrike targeted a possible surface-to-surface -surface missile factory in Syrian base in uh, the country's Masyaf region. Now, of course, the, uh, the suggestion was that Russia was standing down and that the U.S. had warned Russia um, and told them to stand down to let Israel do what it needs to do against Iran and Syria. And apparently that was the agreement. But also, maybe not only are they working on that side of things, uh, basically threatening Russia to stand down, and if not, um, then uh, they would you know get some sort of hit back militarily or otherwise, uh, but their their second um, ace up their sleeve, if you will, uh, is probably having the supersonic missiles, uh, likely which the S-300 isn't able to deal with. Now, maybe the S-400, I don't know if the S-400 can deal with supersonic missiles. Um, it, uh, it's interesting. Uh, it says, a Twitter post stated, the factory was under the protection of advanced Russian S-300 missile defense system. Satellite images released by ISI have showed three out of the four systems erected in Masyaf, with one launcher covered in camouflage net. And so what is this rampage? Well, it was d developed by Israeli Aerospace Industries and is uh, is Israel rather Military Industry Systems. Uh, it is 4.7 meters long and weighs 570 kilograms. That's a heavy missile. It is GPS guided. So that would be something that can be jammed unless it has a cache on board and it's able to remember its coordinates and make some assumptions if the uh, guidance system goes down. It says, making it an all-weather, day-night, long-range, air-to-ground assault missile. And you talk about long-range, that means Israel doesn't have to fly in this area anymore. They can simply launch these missiles uh, from the border regions, 
and uh, hit uh, a ton of targets uh, basically inside Syria. It carries a warhead designed for optimal penetration uh, capabilities, allowing for the destruction of targets inside bunkers. Apparently it's a bunker buster. Its rocket engine and advanced navigation suit uh, allow for precision targeting at a range of hundreds of kilometers. So that's interesting. This is a new weapon, a new tactic, um, all in there because Israel knows they need to get around uh, these S-300, S-400s. They aren't guaranteed in action by uh, Russia, despite the threats by the U.S. to um, do something and, and asking Russia to stand down in these cases. Uh, Israel knows that uh, that's not a sure bet, so they're using technology that is currently above and beyond uh, Russians current, uh, Russia's current uh, air defense capabilities. The missile features an ability to control and monitor the extent of its shrapnel, uh, which makes its strike surgical, accurate, and with minimal collateral damage. So they want to—they don't want to kill uh, Syrians. They're, they're just trying to take out their specific targets um, and, you know, Iranian targets. Uh, says, despite the fact the missile spends a lot of time in the air from the minute it's launched until it strikes its target, its supersonic capability make the rampage difficult to intercept. It's just going so fast uh, that a, a missile system, an anti-missile system could track it, but then it's hard to then get the interceptor up in time. You need a supersonic interceptor up there and, and maybe something faster than uh, whatever the speed of the supersonic uh, missile is uh, to actually hit it to take it out. It says the missile is designed to be launched from a fighter 150 kilometers away from the target, meaning it will not be detected by the enemy's detection interception systems. So it's just outside of the range, apparently, uh, of, the, uh, of the air defense systems, the S-300, as an example here. So interesting situation here. Israel uh, continually using the latest technology, one-upping the enemy to stay ahead of the game. Now they got Russia there. So now look for Russia to bring out its S-400, and, you know, if there's an S-500, whatever else they got. Um, that can actually deal with supersonic missiles. And then what will Israel do? Uh, then maybe Israel will be, will be backed into a corner. And you got to ask, what's the impetus? What's, what prompts Isaiah 17, the tr destruction of Damascus? And maybe Israel gets to a point where it no longer has technological advantage. It can't do what it needs to do in Syria. So it says, that's it. This is our last effort. This is all we can do. And they do a, a, a strategic nuclear strike on Damascus. And that's kind of the speculation um, uh, going around uh, as it relates to what causes Isaiah 17. What is the trigger point for it? So it's something to think about. Interesting story. I'll put the link in the description. You guys can check it out. And we'll see you guys in the next video.